Hello everyone, welcome back to Loyal Speaks. Today, I, Shivash Bunsen, co-founder at Log Community, is here with Mr. Anupam Prasad. He has worked with various law firms like Indus Law and uh, Nishit Desai, Khatan and Company, and various other. And he is presently uh, have his own law chambers, AP Law Chambers, and he is also member Academia Panel for West Bengal National University of Judicial Services and he is member of Foundation of Tata Protection Professionals in India and we are here to know more about his journey and learn from him. So my first question is, how did you strategize your law career after completing your law school? So uh, frankly, I mean, we all as young as you are today, <laughs> then. So there was no really strategy. I mean, just as any law school graduate, once your, uh, your campus recruitments are approaching, frankly, you think of two things. One is which organization and how much they're paying because you don't really know what you're getting into. And, what, and then later on, a year or so re- later, you realize that what you have studied and what you are learning on the job, there's a huge difference. And of course, at that stage, there are regrets also in terms of I wish I had paid attention to my transfer of property class or my CPC when it happened. So to answer your question, there was no strategy really. But yes, I mean, my interest was on corporate laws, but corporate law is a very generic term. So the idea was to get into a reputed name, which I did, uh, a law firm, and then take it up from there. And uh, fortunately, I had very good mentors and my seniors are very good. So that really helped me to sort of, you know, uh, set into the, at least start my profession very seamlessly. And that kind of support, uh, which I got, I, it has been unprecedented, frankly. So yeah, I mean, the, and, and the idea is, and which you will also, whether you, there's no choice really, that you would get tested upon various aspects of law. Well, I may want to say I had wanted to do corporate law, but there would be flavors of employment law, litigation, so on and so forth, which on the hindsight was good, which gives you a sort of a broad based experience and helps you to determine which area of specialization you would eventually want to do. So I think, yeah, that should be the strategy, get into a, a good sort of law office or law chambers, whichever line of uh, uh, profession you want to take and say, and do try to understand where the maximum learning is, uh, irrespective of the financial consideration. That's important uh, because a lot of people give that a lot of more, lot more importance. That's important, but don't, that, don't, don't let that be the number one line item for you. I think look at where you're joining, which team, which seniors you have and how much learning that you could get, which is going to help you in the long run. So what drove you to approach law from e-commerce and finance side? So that's a a slightly interesting question in terms of uh, when I started my career with Nisha Desai Associates. So Nisha Desai Associates is known to have a lot of tech enabled, you know, transactions, at least at that stage, all the Googles and the Amazons they were bought into India and the legal advisors, if you look historically, were Nishi Desai Associates. So by nature, even I sort of got involved into the e-commerce domain. Like a lot of, I remember working with uh, the promoters of Paytm, you know, when they were much smaller and they used to sit out of our sort of conference rooms in our uh, office. So, and then we have seen them grow also and, and sig- a significant part of the journey we have been. So by default, because the, pro- the law firm was doing a lot of work in that space, and you being a sort of employee of that uh, uh, law firm, you end up, I ended up working there. So the finance side, it happened when I moved out from Nishit Desai Associates, my second job was with Khetan and Company. And over there, I was hired in the infrastructure team. And uh, that also involved working in the project finance space. While one may sort of, it was a, sort of a decision to be made because that, that's something I didn't have prior experience with. But then I looked at it as maybe it's a new line of work, which I may perhaps enjoy it more than what I was doing all this while. So I took it up as a challenge, frankly, and uh, at least a good two, two and a half years I spent doing only project finance work, which is of course, uh, you know, interesting, a lot of labor also, you interact with a lot of bankers, at times consortium of lenders. Yes, you end up burning your midnight oil. So one should be prepared for that as well. Uh, so you started your career with Nishit Design and Associates. So how were your initial stage of your career when you joined as an associate? So initial, uh, when you say uh, initial stages, of course, as a fresher, you're pretty much hoping, you know, you're a little nervous also in terms of 
what you're getting into and what's going to happen next and how are you going to you know kind of um, take care of the queries that come in and as a fresher what are your deliverables so the in terms of meeting the expectation is something that uh, kind of uh, would be bothersome at that stage but but people understand at least for the first 6 months to 8 months it that kind of runway you have you know to make mistakes and things like that and learn uh, as you sort of uh, you know uh, grow in the profession but i was lucky enough in fact uh, i always tell people even today especially for younger graduates and freshers that uh, you should try to work in as many practice areas as possible and try to dabble uh, assuming there are various practice areas the firm uh, provides for in fact a lot of larger firms they even have a rotation policy every 6 months you are part of one practice area and then you move you move to another practice area which i think is very helpful uh, to sort of understand where your strong suits lie and therefore help you to determine yeah, you know that you might like a practice area and you would want to specialize you know eventually so yeah so that that sort of was my kind of initial days also you know i i got try to get my, got my, get myself involved in various facets of law which gave me at least uh, some kind of idea okay this seems more appealing than what i was doing earlier and therefore help me make a choice as to what i want to do going forward so how important do you think are the additional diplomas and courses in a law for a student you see i think uh, for me frankly i think uh, everyone may have a different view uh, my view personally it's more to do with self learning it's not that you are trying to get a diploma to add a certain degree or something to flaunt really uh, it, what typically happens is uh, you know law as a subject as a concept is very dynamic like if you take today's example uh because of the covid situation while there are not many transactions happening but say you would have done some kind of studies or some kind of knowledge building towards employment law which is pretty hot right now as a topic so that would help perhaps in form of a diploma to refresh your you know past memories in terms of what you may have learned in law school or in the initial stages of career so so that's that's where i look at diplomas for if i find a subject interesting and i think perhaps there, there is some kind of you know a critical mass one could build across it going forward or i see it as a interesting topic like currently i'm very much focused on fintech data privacy something which i think is going to be the next big thing um, so i think these are new age or new tech new laws if i may put it that way which one really needs to gear up for as we move along i'm sure when like most of the guys if they are students who graduate ai and things like that you know they would become pretty common if not common you will hear elements of it and there will be laws around it also even in terms of labor laws for instance you know right now there is a lot of noise about lot of companies closing their offices and allowing people to work from home so there will be policies or laws around work from home that will need to be evolved so yes i mean law as i said is pretty dynamic and we are sort of growing along with it so it's pretty interesting but one has to keep themselves a little relevant and updated as to what's happening and therefore these diplomas do help you from academic side to brush up and understand at least the conceptual things uh, you are uh, also certified in fintech law and policy so as you mentioned how do you think advancements uh, can be achieved in this field keeping in mind the cyber security threats and all these see i think, uh, i have sort of partly responded to the question already uh, when i sort of did this course on fintech uh, law the idea was again uh, when we sort of get into advising clients we look at perhaps mostly the legal aspect of things but there is a business side to things also which needs to be understood and then you can relate to uh, or make sense of the conversation that you you have with clients in a more sort of uh, fruitful manner so that that was the objective like as law lawyers we get exposed to only one element of it but from a, a person or a promoter standpoint it's essentially you need to make business sense of things also so unless you don't understand those concepts and the interplay it will be very difficult in my opinion at least to give a very uh, you know a helpful response to that and uh, i think uh, uh, in terms of when you talk about cyber security threats it's it's difficult to answer that it's just a subset of that perhaps you know uh, laws are growing challenges are there every day and and f- and fintech that way is, is sort of different from a cyber security standpoint it's a different you know cyber laws that we are talking about i mean it's, there's a lot of overlaps right as we move along between various laws so we will have to see how they grow and of course there are various stakeholders uh, even the enforcement agencies are updating themselves and are aware of the challenges that's being faced 
and as we move more to, uh, towards uh, getting digital i think these things will become an issue and i think would become prolific practice areas also as we move ahead so we can only see the skyrocket that your career has been but the struggles will only be known to you so what can you share what hurdles you faced and how you overcome it so that it will be beneficial for younger generation sure now that's a very difficult question to sum it up in few minutes frankly i i i would not say i mean of course law is a demanding profession i'm sure just like any other profession and and i'm fairly confident having been around for 14 years in this uh, this sort of uh, practice area i can tell you there are no shortcuts in it even if they are it's very temporary and uh, it's not going to last very long and certainly not to one's benefit for sure so i would tell everyone you know you know fold up your sleeves and you know be ready to deep dive and make dirty your hands in terms of uh, you know getting the job done which would include innumerable number of hours perhaps you know burning the midnight soil i clearly remember a lot of my seniors in the past had told me getting into this profession is a lifestyle choice one has made so the expectation of having a work life balance is a misnomer to a large extent you know if you really want to make it big i mean that would be my sort of uh, thought process i mean i'm sure a lot of people may disagree with it so yes they have been obstacles of course uh, even in terms of when i left say khetan in company i moved to a startup called rd legal again which was more friendly sort of you know association so a lot of people had discouraged me you know when you leave from a tier 1 firm it is expected that you should move to a, a similar sort of tier 1 firm but uh, but i thought let me give it a shot right idea is not to have any regrets right like every ha- everything has its advantages and disadvantages so that's what my thought was and that time i frankly to be more practical i didn't have many responsibilities you know i had decent savings i was in married so and i had to take only care of myself frankly so those are the issues that really played along to make certain decisions but i would obviously each case uh, scenario is you know relevant to an individual what i say may not be relevant to a lot of people who are thinking i always say don't uh, be foolish or foolhardy about taking a decision and walking off because in this career there will be a lot of instances where you'll have that it's not worth it oh my god what am i doing you know <laughs> there's no life that that's that's what your life is frankly you know and and do that struggle for good i don't know 7 10 15 years and after that you decide what you want to do frankly the stage which i am in right now i quit i was a partner with industry law until january of this year i decided to do what i did of course few firms did reach out to me to in case i would be interested to discuss any opportunities but i said this is what i have thought of let me do it i'm not sure that uh, i will succeed or fail but at least i don't want to have any regrets so that was as clear about and uh, with that agenda i sort of you know i'm in that in the current role that i am in right now so how did you came up uh, to the idea of ap law chambers and what inspired you to start uh, your own venture sure uh see uh, uh yeah so to answer that question in fact i always believe as lawyers lawyer as a profession is an entrepreneurial profession whether you are you know working in an individual capacity or in a firm or with a with a council for instance it requires that entrepreneurial zeal for one to have it's not a mechanical job that you are doing or filling certain forms and that's about it a lot of things as you move ahead in career there are a lot of expectations apart from work deliverables in terms of business development in terms of client interaction so on and so forth so people skills are also something very important that becomes very relevant so that uh, and that uh, the element of uh, being an entrepreneur was always there in back of my mind and for whatever reason i decided to move out i thought uh, maybe it's a good idea uh, since i've been around for 14 years and then i had few few of the clients who decided that they would continue with me that gave me a fair bit of confidence that you know even if i start something on my own i can hit the ground running so those were frankly my considerations and uh, once you set up something you obviously need to talk to people you need to tell them and it's all part of business development so as to say that you know how we are different from the rest or how we could give you similar sort of deliverable that perhaps uh, you know more competitive pricing and being more available giving partners time so on and so forth so i think uh, those are the usps that we have been sort of uh, 
uh, presenting to people uh, you know whom we reach out to and touch wood i mean i think uh, we have been pretty lucky so far that despite the current uh, you know strenuous situation we have been relatively busy so which is good and uh, yeah it helps us to pay our bills and we are doing i would say i would say reasonably well under the circumstances so through this what are the few life lessons that you have taken from your professional life it always motivates you to take good decisions so it's a very sort of a i think borderline philosophical question to my mind uh, <laughs> so i think uh, see you will have lot of opportunities okay in terms of options which may be legit not legit sometimes borderline morally not correct also so it boils down to an individual essentially it doesn't matter if you're a lawyer as a human being and as an individual you have two choices right to make the right turn or the left and right towards the right stuff and left you know something which is more lucrative perhaps a shortcut uh, perhaps to my mind very short term also it's up to you what you want to do really and at times you end up interacting with a lot of people i think one of the elements to succeed in this profession again it's a continuing in nature is to talk to people network build relationships as very important because at the end of the day those are the individuals whom you're going to reach out to for work related or even for advice for career guidance for to respond to certain issues of law or whatever it may be because i may not have all the answers so if i don't have who do i reach out to i do my research i talk to my peers i talk to my seniors you know so uh, so it's a it's, it's a mixed ball of a lot of things very difficult to answer in very sort of pinpointed manner you know your question as to what are the lessons lessons is i think you have to work hard there is no substitute for that be astute be honest there will be options you know to cut corners you know i i i would say it's not worth it frankly you do your work you do a good job and uh, you know the success will follow you there's a famous dialogue right in that movie three idiots so <laughs> one could even refer to that so yeah i think there's no the, the formula is very simple work hard and keep yourself updated do a good job you are this is a service industry you know whatever we may be driving the fancy cars and wearing fancy suits at the end of the day is the clients that what matters so you have to be available you know and yes you will have difficult clients very good clients but you have to manage people therefore the the people skills that i mentioned about that also comes in so yeah it's a mixed ball of lot of things it's uh, once you get into the profession you as you move along you will come across various issues it depends on how you well you manage it then don't get bogged down you will get a lot of opportunities of just saying okay it's not worth it i you know law was never my calling but no it's i mean you will see you know the light at the end of the tunnel if if there is darkness that you see pretty soon just hang on there it's really worth it in fact law is such a it's a such expansive field and it's omnipresent that's what i call it irrespective of the sectors and irrespective of the industry there are laws that need to be complied with right so you are going to be relevant so one should be very thankful that you have decided to be a law student eventually graduate as a lawyer and practice law i think it's a great place to be in what advice would you like to give to law students and professionals who are just starting their career uh i think i have kind of touched upon a lot of these points but uh, just to sort of recap and reiterate i think uh, wherever you get a job of course this, uh, under the current circumstances things may be difficult job there may be paucity of jobs and whatever it is but yes try to figure out something at least wherever you get in join somewhere because an experience is something that really cannot be sort of monetized is something that you learn and you use it going forward you may not perhaps a lot of people get disheartened oh i was looking to join x but i didn't get a job there but there is something there's always this lot of things to be made out of wherever you're working right it's experiences that nobody can take it away from you so yes there are difficulties currently you may not get for example the kind of pay you would have expected and things like that join somewhere learn the the trade that's very important and once you are you know sort of well sort of uh, endowed with the knowledge i'm sure it's just matter of time you know you'll be calling the shots that this is where i want to join and this is where i don't want to join so yeah, that's what you should do be honest i mean i always tell people you can lie to the world but you can't lie to yourself so you have to be accountable to yourself that's very important and and the day that gives you discomfort obviously you have done something incorrect or you have lied or done something so that will bother you <laughs> that's natural right so yeah and be be sincere be hard working 
I mean, I always say be over prepared. Um, like uh, my first boss, you know, Mr. Nisha Desai, a great human being, of course, he used to always mention, you know, anticipate, prepare, and deliver. So before something comes to you, you should perhaps anticipate, perhaps this is the question or this issue of law is going to come. So you, so you start preparing, you anticipate that, and then you prepare. And then eventually when it comes, you are pretty much prepared to deliver. So that also helps a lot. So I think these are few, I, I, I'm not sure if I can call it mantras, but <laughs> there, there is no quick uh, sort of fixed formula really. But yes, I mean, I think these are the things, very simple things, keep in mind. And yeah, I'm sure you will do well. So lastly, I would like to ask, how do you think organizations like law community benefit the legal fraternity? And what new innovations do you expect from us? I think uh, any sort of initiative, I understand law community is uh, around six months old. And, and it's, it's sort of a platform to encourage interaction. And it's pretty timely also, while uh, I think you started before the lockdown happened. But right now we are living pretty much in a digital world, whether we like it or not. And see, even our interaction is happening through this call, right? We are not meeting in person. So it's pretty timely, you know, um, in, in terms of uh, the setup that's been there. And I think it encourages a lot of people to have those conversations. There are a lot of burning issues also in terms of, um, uh, you know, what are the legal processes that what could do? I mean, the simple things, right? Even I believe, how do you help a domestic worker? Should that person have an issue? What do you do? Should a cop stop you on the road? You know, in a sense, of course, you have to be on the right side of law, but at the, at the same time, you should know what the law is also so that you're not taken for a ride. So I, I think platforms such as that, even smaller issues, you know, it, it helps, it gives others, the audience, the receptors, an opportunity to discuss certain matters which are of sort of which we face on a daily basis and it provides a community or a platform for people to share uh, those messages and the, ex uh, and the experience that they would have had and and therefore make i think it helps in knowledge building and hopefully even help in making sort of you know responsible citizens um, yeah so i think you you guys have started off well and it's good to continue these interactions and yeah it's, i always believe it's good to share knowledge, experiences, and that's how, like, I would have made a mistake, perhaps based on my experience, somebody else would, would not make that mistake. So that, that, that's a good takeaway to have. Yeah, so that, those are my thoughts, really, and I, I wish you guys all the best as well. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for having such an insightful interaction with us, and it will definitely going to benefit a lot of young mind people, and we are sure. going to have a time with you, and law community is great for the same. Mm -hmm.